Hello and welcome to Cook This. Welcome to Cook This. I am your host, Tom Dignan, and today I have with me a very special guest, Mr. Eric Hummel, Thank you. who is actually the head chef in our very own Riverside Brookfield Cafeteria. So first, welcome, Eric, and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you very much, Tom. I am actually the chef manager for Quest Food Services. I've been here for three years. I live in Brookfield, and I actually love everything about what I do here. <laughs> for RB, so. Awesome, I look forward to having you cook for awesome. us. So why don't we have you get started with some of your cutting and chopping while we Fantastic. meet some of our guests today, <laughs> our panel of experts. We have Principal Smetana here. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. You're a pleasure wearing blue, and I can see we've all got blue on. Assistant Principal Lundquist. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. To Educator Bauer. Hello. Thank you and welcome. And we're all wearing blue today. We all managed to successfully wear blue. Eric is wearing black. That's traditional chef garb, so he gets a free pass. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> the idea behind the show is we're going to do three segments where basically Eric is going to cook uh, three different entrees for us. And we have sort of a theme going for this show, which is some of the favorite foods of our RB students. Am I right? Yes, that is correct. All right, so what are you going to be making for us first? Uh, today, Tom, we're going to start off with uh, one of the famous chicken noodles noodle soups offered every Monday here at Riverside Brookfield. Uh, very simple recipe, it's Quest's recipe. Uh, we start with uh, what Tom liked to mention earlier as a mirepoix, which is a combination of celery, onions, and carrot. I generally like to keep it simple, so I do a two to two to one ratio. We do two parts carrot, two parts celery, and one part onion. Um, after that, what we're gonna do is chop a little bit of the chicken thigh that we use. We use fresh chicken thigh for everything. Um, what we do is cook it first in the oven to try to render a little bit of the fat out so we reduce the fat content in the soup. I will dice this and I will place it in our pot to render a little bit more of the fat out and then we'll saute some of our vegetables. Great. So you said that uh, your recipes are actually Quest recipes. So do you have to follow all the recipes we do in the cafeteria have to be theirs, or do you get to input a little of your own flair? That's also a great question. Yes, we follow every single one of the recipes to the T. No, so, so let me ask you this. Thought, this recipe yeah. then calls that for curly parsley, correct? Uh, you know, generally the recipes are designed just flat. Whatever we can get at the time that's fresh and available, we use that. So as opposed to using a flat leaf, curly leaf parsley. Either way. I don't know if we can see this close up, which is the curly leaf. It's actually it is. curly. The leaves are slightly curly. So curly name. leaf. Yes, and I didn't even come up with that. That's the real name for it. Um, so we're just, do you, uh, do you do just a standard chop? Do we need to dice? Do we need, do we care about size of our pieces here? No, uh, that's your, also a great question. I generally care about every size that we put into things. Mouthfeel is very important in food. Uh, so generally in soups, I try to keep things at about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. We're doing a real coarse chop here. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get the soup done in time. Awesome. Uh, go ahead. Oh, I, I'm just, oh. I like watching you do your work. So is this <laughs> your favorite soup also that you make here, or are there um, different soups that you like better? You know, chicken noodle is such a standard, and in the wintertime, it's, it's easy to make, it's fun, and it, it never tastes bad, ever. No. Now, all right, let's go to our panel. How many of you have ever made chicken noodle soup from scratch before? Anyone? I haven't made it from scratch. Like, I mean... Not the, my own broth. I cheat and I use the canned broth. Okay. That's not cheating. Would you consider that cheating? Absolutely not. Shortcuts are some of the finest ways to cook food in a kitchen. Now let's talk about your broth. Do you use a canned broth or do you make homemade stock here? Actually, stock? what we do is use a, uh, a proprietary chicken base that we purchase. It's actually a sodium-free chicken base. Um, it does have salt in it, but not the regular salt that people are familiar with. Now, I'm going to go ahead and look at the, is this your chicken base here? That is. Okay, so this is basically a concentrated chicken stock that you will add water to to sort of make a full broth. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It smells fantastic. And then what do we have here? It looks like a, some sort of seasoning mix. Yeah, uh, just before I came up, I grabbed maybe four. What we're going to do is we're going to do about a gallon. 
Uh, so I did a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of garlic. So I get a gallon of soup, and then what are you going to serve for these guys? Because I'll take the gallon of the chicken noodle, right? That's, or you yeah. and I will split it? We could do that. We're going to get the parsley. You get the, okay, Curly the parsley, parsley, and then we have an right. onion left, so maybe I could share some onion with you guys. If you want <laughs> carrots that. are big enough. Maybe we could have some yeah, carrots. Those are monster carrots. engineered carrots. Yes. Why are they so big? Like I said before, you should have seen the rabbit I stole these from. Ah, it was a big, big rabbit. rabbit. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you, um, are you responsible for actually getting uh, your own produce, or does the com company tell you, here's where your produce is coming from? Yes, we do have contracts with uh, second-party purveyors or middlemen, whatever you want to call them. Um, and also, we are, Quest actually has uh, registered dietitians working in the office, so we are restricted to some of the products we can buy. So even right. if kids have requests for, we want to get this or that, if it's not on an order guide, I can't get it. Gotcha. So, so it looks like we're all done, or at least yeah. close to being finished with chopping. So you're going to go into this big stock pot all the way towards yep. the end here. Oh, and that's a boneless chicken thigh. I was wondering if... Boneless, yeah. So you said you roasted that in the oven. Did you season yes. that? What do you got on there? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a non-sodium. Uh, they call it an all-purpose herb seasoning. It's usual stuff, parsley, dried parsley, garlic, uh, lemon, uh, pepper, oregano. Okay, now why use chicken thigh as opposed to, say, a boneless, skinless chicken breast or even a bone-in skin on chicken breast, white um, thigh? That's a good question also. I think you could really use anything. We prefer to use, oh, I do actually, because we can get boneless skinless breast. I prefer to use this because of the fat content. Right. Obviously, it makes soup a little bit better. Yeah, the dark meat has a little bit Absolutely. more flavor to it. And so we're going into the pot. Do you have any oil in it or anything no in there? No oil. The, there's the fat content in this, the rest of this chicken thigh that'll produce exactly what we need to sweat these vegetables. So it looks like you got about a medium heat. Yep. And you're just going in chicken first, let that render down a little bit, then you'll go vegetables. Yeah. Have you cooked before, Tom? I've cooked once or twice. <laughs> it sounds uh, like maybe yeah. about twice. I, yes. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if anybody's noticed, you know, I enjoy eating food. I enjoy cooking food. So I, I'm actually one of the, I, like, I enjoy making my own stock. So if I make chicken noodle soup, I'm making, I'm starting with stock and I'm doing it that way just because I, I like it. I like cooking. Yeah. Okay. It's fun. Yes. I so, agree. Let's go back to our panel. Do you, have you ever had, a, which of the soups do you like from the cafeteria? Do you like the chicken noodle? Because chicken noodle is one of my favorite. Chicken, chicken noodle is definitely my favorite. Chicken noodle is pretty much like one of two soups I eat in general. What's the other one? Tomato. <laughs> tomato <laughs> soup. That's surprising. Good tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, Interesting. that's so comforting. I don't have really refined uh, taste when it comes to um, foods. I gotcha. Ms. Ms. Bauer? I like the chicken noodle soup. Okay. And um, when they make any kind of Italian soup, mm -hmm. love it. Love minestrone. Love a pasta fagioli. Yeah. I love that. They do a great job with all I make some soups. really good pasta fagioli. Mm hmm. Yeah. Is that really how you say fagioli or is it fagioli? Uh, fagioli. Uh, I, Fajol. Wow. Fajol. Oh. I don't know. All of a sudden we're watching I the just, you know, I just say like soup. <laughs> <Video>. you, <know? laughs> you better watch the soup. Uh, so we're getting close to wrapping up this segment. Eric is going to go ahead and sweat these vegetables out, get a little bit of our base and get our soup together. Uh, and we will be back with the second uh, section of our show and we're going to cook some more good stuff with Eric Humphrey. Hello and welcome back to Cook This. Again, I'm Tom Dignan here with our guest, our bees chef extraordinaire, Eric Hummel. We started a chicken soup, which we've got over on the side here. And now what are you going to make for our second dish here, Eric? Uh, second dish is not necessarily an RB favorite. We're actually uh, implementing these on Monday with uh, chicken tenders. What we do is an Asian sort of flair. So egg rolls are on the menu every Monday in the uh, center station. Uh, real nice. Egg rolls are very versatile. Uh, foods, you can put a lot of things in them. Generally, people get the Asian style egg roll with cabbage, pork, carrot, stuff like that, and onion. Today, what I'm gonna do is a Southwest egg roll and an Italian beef egg roll. So we got a little bit of a different flair going on. Uh, egg roll wrappers, you can find them in the refrigerated section of uh, your local grocery store usually. Um, I've taken the liberty of making a Southwest chicken mix already. We have diced chicken, shredded chicken, black beans, Cheddar cheese, green onion, green pepper, green bell pepper, roasted red pepper, roasted jalapenos, Ooh. and a tiny bit of taco seasoning. So what I'm doing on these, I turn the uh, sounds really good. I turn the egg roll wrap on its side so it makes sort of like a diamond. I put about three three to five ounces in the egg roll, 
I need a brush with a little egg white wash that I brought up from the kitchen downstairs. And we just sort of paint it around. Now, why do you do that? Uh, as, a, as the egg roll wrapper, uh, they're floured, so what we do is we wet the flour on it with the protein that's in the albumin of the egg. It tends to make it a more stickier surface, so your egg roll stays together, so it doesn't burst apart when you're deep frying it. So if I used water, is that why my egg rolls tend to fall apart? As a matter of fact, oils? they're made with water, so if you use water to wet them, they will tear. And see, I stopped making egg rolls for this reason, and all I had to do was use the albumin from the egg white. You got it. Well, Absolutely. now you can make them tonight. I'm going to make them tonight now. I will get the and ingredients on the way home. Also, Tom, it is best to use two wraps. So what you do is take your first wrap with the ingredients on the inside, completely wash the second wrap, and actually do it in, wrap it in reverse. So when you do your first egg roll, generally you have something open on either end because right. you're used to the ones from the Chinese restaurant that are big and giant. Yeah. So what they do is they take it, put these sides down, and then wrap it again in the opposite direction. And then we get double wonton yes. stuff there. So this is technically adding more flavor, more crunch, and keeping it from falling all over the pan. That's exactly what we're doing. So, so Pal, have you ever had uh, a Southwest egg roll or a non-traditional egg roll from somewhere? Lost my mic. Go ahead. I've had the Italian beef egg roll. From uh, here or where? Um, from a, a, an establishment in Berwyn. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I can't that could recall be the name. Yes, it is Laverne's. Laverne's And I'll tell them. you, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was the first time I ever had one. Awesome. Yeah. Really, really Never good. would have Laverne's thought of combining the two ingredients. I yeah. look forward to... Uh, Tasting it down in the cafeteria. They make a good Philly cheesesteak egg roll at Sullivan Steakhouse. Mm. In, That's uh, another one. Naper yeah. Well, they have them in other places, but I've tried the one in Naperville. Surprisingly, I enjoy it. Oh. I well, love there's that. not any vegetables mm. in For it. those of you that are watching <laughs> that don't know Mrs. Lindquist, she's not a fan of her food touching mm -hmm. uh, one another. Yeah. So I'm surprised to hear that she's excited to try the egg roll today. So we can't have a touch of anything touching. separate. It has to be all separated. Like Thanksgiving on dinner where people like put everything on their plate and then they put like gravy over it and they have, I can't do that. Hmm. I have several plates of things because if potatoes touch corn, touch meat, it just all you know, like a doesn't kid's work plate out. that would have a divider. Yes, a divider. That would be my dream. Like a Tupperware, one of those China, Tupperware things. If my China had like portioned out, that would, I, 100% purchase those. If anybody out there is working for a fine china company, you've got a yeah. market here that right? needs to be explored. Compartmentalized China. china. All right, let's get back That's to these egg rolls. What kind of oil are you using and why? Uh, oil that we can get, uh, as far as Quest standards goes, is a uh, natural soybean oil. Um, has a very similar lipid profile as like an olive oil. Uh, it has a great smoke point in it. You can get it on a high temperature and make French fries, fresh cut fries, egg rolls, a lot of crispy things. So. Uh, so you talk about smoke point. Explain to us what smoke point means. Uh, smoke point. Uh, there's generally oils do not have the same knowledge. chemical makeup. Yeah, I'm keeping my eye on it. Um, they don't have the same chemical makeup. So some oils so will break down at a lower temperature mm -hmm. than other oils. Peanut oil is the standard for the highest temperature in the business. It does great things, but we are a nut-free school so we cannot use peanut oil so is soybean soybean oil technically healthier or is it just a different type of oil it's a different type of oil but like i said it's got a similar lipid profile as like an olive oil so okay. it's very low in saturated fat now i see that there are cups of something delicious in front do we have a dip for these because i enjoy yes. dipping my egg rolls into other things <laughs> gravies and sauces yes that's exactly i'm the opposite right. i would uh -huh. like my food covered in all sorts of things so what are we going to do with these egg rolls when they're finished that's great well for the southwest egg roll uh we make a uh, dressing for a taco salad that's we actually do for some of the satellite schools we cook for we don't only cook for rb we cook for Camark, we cook for all of D95, LaGrange Highlands, and we just picked up an ombudsman school, Alliance Township. So what they did make is a taco salad, and the simplest things when you try it, it is so delicious, they just take salsa and they mix it with ranch dressing, and it is what? outstanding. Now, Ms. Lundquist, can you allow your salsa to touch the ranch? I enjoy a good salsa. I really enjoy a good ranch <laughs> dressing. I don't know. I don't know about this. It's I don't know about marriage. bringing them together. This Maybe could I'll be give it a shot. A momentous occasion for you in which we guess. actually combine foods. We're so gonna see what happens. How long would you let these go for? Uh, well, since this is my first time trying to fry on an induction cooker, I'm gonna wait until you know. Generally, if 
a lot of the stuff is a uh, reheat. Either you've used Italian beef that you had in, mm -hmm. in the fridge, already cooked, you're chopping it up, throwing in um, jardinier, mozzarella cheese, internal temperatures need to re reach about 165. So I have a trusty pocket thermometer. Okay. So we're going to wait till the outside brown a little bit, then we're going to give it a poke. Great. So not too soon, though. Not too soon. So we're going to let, we got our chicken soup over here. Yeah. We got these delicious looking egg rolls. And when we come back, we're going to hit our third dish oh, with yeah. Riverside Brookfield chef Eric Hubble. Hello and welcome back to Cook This. I'm Tom Dignan here with Eric Hummel. We got chicken noodle soup going. We have egg rolls. I don't know who can see if we can see these, but these amazing egg rolls just came out of the fryer. You want me Go to ahead, pick it up. show one of these? Sure. Look at that. I mean, crispy, delicious. It smells okay. like heaven in here. And we're about to head into our third segment. So what are we making now? Uh, we are going to feature our chicken fingers that we hand bread every Monday. For. Wait a minute, I hear cheering. Yeah. Who is cheering over here and why? Chicken finger. It's like the ultimate, it's the ultimate food. Chicken fingers. Chicken fingers. I consider myself a connoisseur. I'm very excited about this. Well, th uh, listen, Good. this is a little bit of pressure. I, mean, I hope <laughs> well, I'm up these for the chicken challenge. fingers are up for the challenge. Yes, they are. So I have what, faith. Obviously, we're, make, what, we're making scrambled egg chicken scrambled tenders. Scrambled egg what do we chicken have here? tenders. Yeah, actually, it's one of the uh, key ingredients to breading our chicken tenders. We start with uh, boneless, skinless chicken breast. Uh, generally makes a better tender, less fatty. We cut them into strips. These came from the kitchen earlier since I didn't have time to do raw chicken up here, and I wouldn't want to mix raw chicken with any of our cooked ingredients up here. Thank you for that. We all appreciate that. Yes. We do appreciate that. So, what we've done is we have floured and seasoned the chicken uh, tenders with a little bit of lemon pepper, Cajun seasoning, and seasoning salt. Uh, the mixture we use is pretty much 50-50, so flour to seasoning. Uh, if you use too much flour, you're going to get a very bland chicken tender. So Why do you use flour at all? Uh, flour, again, flour, more gluten. Gluten, I know it's a gluten-free <laughs> world, but the protein uh, from the chicken juices actually mixes with the flour to create a stickier substance so breadcrumbs will stick to it a lot better so now you have the seasoning so this is a mixture like it's sort of a yep. wet mixture what it is it? wet now why is that because usually i've done it where i just go flour into the egg into the what i found is that the longer you let the seasoning and the flour sit on the chicken, the better the chicken will taste. Mm. So I let it sit for a good day. I've learned something in every single segment of the show, Eric. Yeah, good. It's amazing. It's fantastic. So now you're going to take it from the egg wash into yep. uh, these standard breadcrumbs. Did you make these yourself? Is this a bag? What do we got? This actually, these, this is a product we do buy. It's very simple. It's easier to buy it in a box than to make it. They are simple unseasoned, unbrowned, or un, uh, what do they call them, toasted panko breadcrumbs. Okay, now why like panko that. as opposed to like a fine grain Italian breadcrumb or something like that? Because I like panko better too. Panko, um, I agree, panko is a lot better. We try not to deep fry anything straight through, so we find that baking the panko helps set the egg in the mixture. So they don't spend as much time in the fryer and get as greasy, but they're still very crispy. So these will actually be baked chicken tenders. They start baked. Are chicken tenders traditionally fried? Yes. Now let's go back fried. to our panel. As a chicken <laughs> tender connoisseur, do you prefer a baked or a fried tender? Uh, I would default to the fried, but I don't, I mean, this sounds interesting. I'm intrigued. I trust Eric, I'm, so we're going to see what happens. Well, if we can do a, a crispy, delicious baked chicken tender, technically that's better for us, right? It is, absolutely. Less this oil. This is baked and fried? We start it, yeah. We start it that way. So now start it baked, finish it fried. Got we're it. going into the same exact oil as our egg rolls, am I right? Yep, we have to. Why we is that? Because we have no more room and no more fryers on the floor. Ah, that it's makes a lot of sense. Reason. Now, is that something you do in the kitchen too, or would you have multiple oil stations set up or whatever? Multiple you... oil stations. We actually have two deep fryers downstairs. We don't use both of them all the time. We tend to just try to keep uh, fresh cut fries in them. Uh, but on chicken tender days, we'll, what we'll do is we'll do our fries first and then save the last batch for the uh, chicken tenders. So. Is that something you, you like have to do for health reasons, that you always save the chicken out of it? I mean, doesn't the oil stay at the same temperature as set all it, the time? It, yes, that's a, that's a great point, Tom. Uh, actually, fresh cut fries come out of ice cold water, so what they do is they will drop the temperature of the fryer dramatically. So why do you put it in ice cold water? Crispy? Uh, oh no, we actually, uh, we soak, we brine our fries. 
Fresh cut fries. Okay, brining <laughs> is when you take a salt solution, well, salt yes. water solution, and essentially you brine something to? To increase the water content of it. Which does what? Well, it makes it juicier if you're talking about meats that you brine, but in the case of French fries, what you want to do is create a very crispy edge on a fresh cut fry. So oil and water don't mix, and the function of frying is to bring water to the boiling point, 212. So when water is trying to evaporate out of the fry, it keeps a nice oil-water interface on the edge of the fry. You had me at French fries, mm -hmm. which <laughs> everything else after yep. that sort of sounded like oh, math wow. or science or something, <laughs> right. and I don't All really I do science and math, so I'm just going to take your word for it, and I'm going to start brining my French fries. I brine all the meats and all this stuff. Now I'm going to start brining French fries. Excellent. Uh, panel, let's go back to you. Favorite things to cook if you cook? I always like experimenting with a new salad, so for me... I would try new salad, new salad dressings, different combinations. She stole my answer. I really do <laughs> like experimenting with a good salad. Uh, I really, <laughs> this is going to sound shocking. I like to cook meatloaf. My oh, mom's meatloaf recipe. Food. My mom's meatloaf recipe is like one of my favorite things. But to doesn't make. that technically but consist of putting a bunch of things I'm together into a little I'm an anomaly, form? Tom Digman. It, <laughs> it's an, it is an anomaly. You can't just pigeonhole me into one place. Lots of foods mixed with meatloaf. Yes, but somehow it works. I love it's meatloaf mom's too. Magic. This is Bauer. Well, I cook a lot on Sundays. That's my therapeutic day. <laughs> I'm the same. Right? All and, day. And, and I do. I make my grocery list out on Saturday and what I'm going to cook. My husband makes fun of me because I have all the cookbooks <laughs> spread out on the table and I decide what I'm going to make for the week and then I go grocery shopping and then I cook all Sunday. That's right. Nice. It's my Sunday ritual too. Mm -hmm. I don't use cookbooks though. I'm kind of just, I walk around the store and start pulling things off. And I've ran into a few together. times at Mariano. We right? have at Mariano's a yeah. few times, peek into each other's cart, what right. are you making, right. a little mac and cheese. So we're going to come back to these tenders, and we are now loading our pot with delicious fried things. Yes. Um, these ones, it looks like you've par-cooked or pre-cooked. I did. In okay. the kitchen, I actually did some of them. These are the par-baked chicken tenders before they go in the fryer. I tried to see if we could actually cook them straight through in an induction cooker, trying to boil oil on the top of an induction cooker top. So this is sort of a, this is a new way for you to do some of your cooking yeah. projects. Yeah, induction cooking. And success? Would you do it again? I would. <laughs> I would not actually. You could be honest. It is. No? This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> now, why though? Okay, because if you don't cook, you or if, yeah. What do you, what's the trouble you're having? The oil is splattering everywhere. Yes, it is. A very dirty workspace. Um, I is... have several <laughs> severe burns um, that I will be showing uh, the nurse later. I also oh. noticed that your uh, your temp on your oil dropped. Yeah. So is that because of the induction top, and are you? angry at that or is it because you put a lot of food in it and here's what the point I was making about fresh cut fries it's the reason is because of ice cold chicken in the oil it has dropped the temperature dramatically as soon as I put the chicken in it's always the ice cold chicken chicken blame America's all right food. we're gonna wrap up this segment uh, and we're gonna come back with Eric Hummel and eat some food how does that sound everybody Fantastic. thanks for watching I'm Tom yeah. Newman we'll be back with cooking we're back. I'm Tom Dignan with uh, Cook This. I'm here with Eric Hummel, our wonderful in-house chef. We finished our egg rolls. I'm going to hold that up so you can see it. Can you kind of see, if you want to zoom in there, how delicious these egg rolls look? I don't know how much we can zoom. But we're going to give everybody a little Southwest taster. We'll give everybody a little there we go. beef taster. Is that how we're doing it, right? Yeah, looks good. And then we will pass these on to our guests. If I could come on over here. I won't interfere with Eric's work so we don't burn. So if we could pass Thank those you. down, maybe get a quick taste of those. Thank you. There's one more. <clears throat> Coming down. Yep. We got our soup is boiling away, so it looks yeah. like that's ready. We could do sure some is. taste of that. Yep. And we got our tenders frying up. Wow. I'm going to go it. just start right in on this. And I don't know if I'm supposed to eat as the host, mm. but I'm going to. That's interesting. So whatever rules I may be breaking Which here by eating this food, I apologize, and I'm going to enjoy it because I have to tell everybody how good the food is, correct? Mm. Yes, you do. I see all of you cutting your egg rolls. Is this the Seinfeld I, I, Snickers I episode? I or what are we I doing here? Oh, that's a great <laughs> reference. <laughs> that's great. Well, I just dove into mine. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a slob or have no manners, but I wasn't going to wait. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't want to get it all over my face. Mm. Mm. Eric, I these are amazing. These mm -hmm. are really, really Which good. Which the Southwest ones? The, South the Southwest. Mm. It's a lot of spice, and the vegetables are so fresh. Oh, There's vegetables good. in there? Uh-oh. And you can't even dun, tell. Dun, dun. I didn't even know. That's fantastic. So, oh, I now you're back to me as I'm taking a bite. Southwest is a success. Ooh. I am eating the amazing Italian beef ones. Is this pot roast or is this Italian beef in here? That's Italian enough. beef. That's the Italian beef we make here. I'll bite this one. Jardinera. So, it's crispy. It it's juicy. It's, it smells wonderful. Mm. This smell I good. hope things aren't touching each other on your plate. They're not. Good. <laughs> so, ooh, there's some kick in that one. Oh, the Southwest? Mm-mm. Mm. The other one. Oh, Jardinera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is the Jardinera. This is the first time I've. <laughs> this is the first time I've had Jardinera. Just so you know. Is it really? Yeah. You've I never know. had Jardinera before. No. Wow. Well, I what told are your you, first impressions? Because technically, that's a vegetable. Kicky. I like it. It's kicky. 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 We also have invented a new culinary <laughs> term here for You're things welcome. that are spicy. We're going to call them kicky. You're welcome. Uh, now we've also got this some. Is, oh wait. What did so you think about good. the sauce? I like the sauce. I like the salsa. Now, did you guys? Is the salsa homemade? Uh, no, that is not. Okay, okay. I like the combination. It works. Because you were excited about it. You were. I, I think excited. it was you, right? Excited about mixing the salsa with the ranch. Right. No. I didn't love it. You didn't love the sauce. But that doesn't mean it's a bad sauce. It just means again. Well, she. With listen, the she's the one who separates all her food, <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's not your fault. Okay. Well, Miss Matana. I liked it. It provided an, a nice extra. Kick. Made it very kicky. Kicky. It's there very you go. kicky. It's very kicky. And for I somebody really who's like picky, it wasn't even one. a picky kicky. Mm -mm. <laughs> so How about the clever. soup? Who has tried the soup? I haven't tried, I tried the soup. The soup. Tried what it, I love yeah. about your soup is that it's unbelievably temperature hot, and I like my soup really, really Ooh, hot. I do too. I'm mm. excited now. It's super flavorful. Of course, the vegetables are nice and fresh. It's really, really good. It's pretty easy to get a bite without vegetables too, which is really. <laughs> Making my mm. experience better. <laughs> so you just want the noodles and liquid, <laughs> noodles and broth. Oh, that's incredible! It is really hot. It is really mm -hmm. hot. Oh, good. I love that. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't burn your mouth, I'm not interested in the soup. I like oh. the. See, I'm one who lets it cool a little bit. I because I want to taste cube it. In it. Yeah, or mm. you know, set it aside and come back a moment later after I'm cooking something else. Yeah. Right. So your tenders came out. How yeah. do you feel about your tenders? Uh, I think the temperature of the oil just it wasn't hot enough. I think they I can see it. They soaked up a little bit of the grease more than I would generally like to see. Are we going to serve some anyways? I think we're going to try them. Okay, you first. <laughs> Is that how we'll do it? I will do it. <laughs> now, do you have a sauce for this? You know, I didn't bring a sauce for this. I want people to actually taste what a fresh chicken mm -hmm. tender mm -hmm. tastes like Good instead cough. of drowning it. How in. does it smell? It smells delightful. You remind me of Hawkeye from MASH. Hawkeye from MASH? Remember, he had to smell all of his food before he ate it. I, MASH was a little before my time. <laughs> so am I dating my age? I don't want well, I mean, I'm not old. <laughs> old. I don't. Those are fighting words. I didn't right watch MASH. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take one of the first bites it of these. It smells good. I love Do chicken it. tenders, too. I think once you have kids, chicken tenders become something you just automatically Stable. have to like yeah. because I just mm. eat all their leftovers. They're really good. Mm -hmm. Ooh, they're crispy. I can tell you that. That's a good sign. I like that. Mm -hmm. Love I like a good crumbs. crispy chicken tender. That's the best mm. way to do it. Yeah. Well, That's we're going to finish our food here. I'm going to thank our guest, Mrs. Bauer, Mrs. Lindquist, Miss Matana. I'm also going to, as we have hot oil splattering all over us, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to thank our chef, Eric. I'm going to give him a handshake with a little bit of oil on it and say thank you for That's coming. Fine. Thank you very much for having Stop me. Stop down at the cafeteria. We're going to start egg rolls next week, right? Monday. Monday. Okay. So for all of our guests here and for Chef Eric, I'm Tom Dignan, and this has been Cook This. Thank you for watching, and tune in next time.